Hey everybody, it's Lisa from the Silver Farmhouse. I'm coming to you with a pre-recorded video, guys. It's gonna be a little lengthy, but I think you're gonna love the outcome of what you can make. So look behind me. Guys, it's a punched tin tree. I know it might be a little hard to see because you're far away, but guys, we're gonna create, I'm gonna show you how to create the tree and what I use to decorate it with on this live, but you can make an adorable punch tin tree. And yes, it does have lights in it. Do you see them? I have a string of lights in them. You could paint them whatever color you would like to paint them. You could decorate them however you would like to decorate them, but we're gonna get started and I'm gonna show you what you need. You're gonna need a tomato cage. You're gonna need a tomato cage. You need any kind of tomato cage. Mine just happens to be white, but you can use whatever one you have. You're gonna need some floral wire. I got floral wire here because what I'm doing right now is you can see the floral wire on the side. I am reinforcing the sides with a little bit of floral wire, just so I know it has a little bit of support on the sides when once we start putting the aluminum cookie sheets on there. But I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna reinforce the sides with some, just some, I'm using green floral wire. That's all I'm using. And you're gonna want to put a few little pieces on the inside of your circles here. The reason I'm doing this is because when you drop your strand of lights in, some of them will catch on these and hold them up into the spots on the top because there's no other way to get your lights to stay up there. So I tried to think of an idea. So if you could see, I'm just wrapping floral wire around. In order to get it to hold, you need to do a double wrap on a bar. So I'm gonna wrap a strip across, then I'm gonna come over this way and I'm gonna wrap another one diagonal. You just need a couple, don't? You still need to be able to access to put your hand up in. So don't like totally cover it, just do a couple little diagonal wires and I'll hold this up when we're done here to show you what I'm talking about, about being able to access with your hand, but yet it's going to be a light catch. It's gonna catch your lights. Oh, black shirt wasn't good to wear, Lisa. So do you see, I have a couple strips, I have a couple little strands here, just going all diagonal. So when you drop your lights in, they do catch because you can see my top is lit up here. So my lights are actually up in the top and going down the center and the bottom. So this does help to catch your lights because there's no other way to hold them on the top. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, maybe we'll twine this first. Maybe we'll put some twine on this first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on the floor right now because we're gonna need to wrap more wire, but I want to grab the top pieces and wrap some twine, glue some twine around them. So let me find my twine. Yeah, it's okay, I didn't bring my twine out with me. Hang on, I'm looking for my twine, guys. I'm looking for my twine. All right, so I don't know if I bring, I thought I bring my twine out with me, but I don't think I did. So what I'm gonna take is, oh yeah, I did. It's right here. I thought I did, I thought I'd bring it out with me. I'm gonna take some twine and I'm gonna hot glue some twine just around the top to hold the top pieces together. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue to one of the branches here, one of the branches that we have. And I'm gonna just wrap some twine around the top just to hold my top pieces together. And I'll hold it up for you so that you can see what I actually just did. Take my scissors. We're gonna cut the twine off. And I'm just gonna tack it on because I needed something to hold. You could use whatever you want. You could use wire, you could use twine. I used twine, but I just wrapped my little top piece with some twine. Hot glue, twine, just to hold it together. Now, we're going to start to wrap the wire to give a little support around the top, just around the top, as best as you can. This is gonna have to go around and around. And I'm just using floral wire. Just using floral wire. Again, you don't have to be perfect. Every now and then you're gonna need to go around a bar to secure it in place. You just can't keep wrapping around in a circle. You're going to need to grab it and then wrap it around a bar and then keep going. I'm gonna pull this on the ground here so that I can do some more of the top here at a reachable area. And like I said, you just, just work with it. Work with it. 
You just need to get some wire around for some support. You don't have to go crazy. I'm gonna show you, I'll hold it up when I'm done to show you exactly what I did. I'm gonna wrap this one around. This one's a little loose. Let me snip my wire. I just didn't want them caving in uh, super badly when you pushed it because the top is going to get a little tricky when I show you what we're going to do. Um, you're going to need like a wooden spoon or a broomstick handle or something long, something long. So I just wrapped, I should have wore a white shirt. I just wrapped some more wire right around the top here just for a little support as we go up and create our punched tin tree. Guys, it comes out amazing. Now your top gets a little bent. Um, it gets a little bent. And you could try to pop it out. I did the best I could, because once you get up here, it's very hard to get something up in there to bang out your tin after we punch it. But what you're gonna need is, I'm using, from the Dollar Tree, you get two in a pack. They are two foil oblong cake pans two foil oblong cake pans, okay? This is what I'm using. They did not have any cookie sheets when I was there. By all means, if you wanna use cookie sheets, you'll probably use less, but I could not find any cookie sheets. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to carefully cut the center. We're cutting the center out of our cookie oblong cake pan. Now, you are going to need a total of between 25 to 26 sheets of, if you're using the oblong cake pan. If you're using the oblong cake pan, you're gonna need 25 to 26 sheets of aluminum off of your cake pans. There is two in a pack, so it'll roughly cost you about $13 for cookie sheets, $13. But guys, this tree is large. <laughs> it's a large tree. And if you were to go buy this tree, you were going to pay more than about uh, total what we have into it, $18 maybe, uh, for this tree because of the size. It's not a small tree. I'll stand next to it. It's not a small tree. It's up to my shoulders. And a lot of you were asking me to create a farmhouse tree out of the tomato cage. And I didn't want to do it the way everybody else was doing it. So I came up with my own way, guys. I came up with my own way to do this tree. So now I have my cookie sheet just cut into like a rectangle form. Doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about how perfect your edges are. You need the center. I'm gonna get all my cookie sheet out of here. Just be careful with cookie sheet. It's very sharp and you can cut yourself. My suggestion would be for you to wear rubber gloves while doing this. What you're gonna need is a rolling pin. If you're using the cookie sheet with the pattern, do you see the bottom? Now, a lot of cookie sheets have a stamp imprint on the bottom. Um, I don't know if it's what it's made of, or I tried to find one without any stampings or imprints on it. So this is the only one I found that doesn't have like a thing in the middle with all words. But I took a rolling pin and I just rubbed the rolling pin on my cookie sheet to kind of flatten out those bumps, to kind of flatten out those bumps. And then what you're gonna do is on one end of your cookie sheet, I'm not even gonna go that far yet. Let's not go that far yet. Oh, let's not go that far yet. Let's start at the bottom. So flatten your cookie sheets out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a cookie sheet. Now, some of them may have stickers. The stickers I'm gonna put on the inside. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to lay it down on my, on my um, tomato cage. But little help, little suggestion, I found this works is kind of round them out when you're doing them. So you wanna kind of round them so that when you lay them down, they're easier to work with. So you're gonna lay it down and have a little overhang on the bottom. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the bottom and you're gonna tuck it up underneath. Just like a half inch, quarter inch, whatever you wanna do there. And then I'm going to take, you see I just folded it. I folded it right underneath. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue underneath this flap, just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy, just a little bit to hold it. And then push it down to hold it. And voila, you have your first 
piece of your tin on. Now you're gonna have to overlap as you go. We're going to overlap a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna over, I think I got paint on these now, little paint scraps. So I'm gonna put, put I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. Again, folding them, don't fall off, don't fall off, don't fall off. I'm gonna over overlap it, but folding them in a little bit of a bend helps when you're laying them on your, it's not the easiest process guys, but it comes out amazing. So I'm kind of just lining it up with the top, overlapping it a little bit on the other one. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna tuck it under. Don't worry if it's not perfect, not perfectly lined up at the top because we're overlapping on the top too. So I'm just gonna fold it over and again, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna add some glue. Oops. I'm just gonna add a little bit. You don't have to go crazy, just enough to hold a little piece of it on. And I don't have one of these pre-made. We are making this entire thing on here. So bear with me, stick with me. We're gonna do the same and we're just gonna keep overlapping and putting them around, but just make sure you overlap a little bit. You have to overlap a little bit. I'm just gonna overlap this one. Pinch it under. We're gonna add some glue. And we're gonna keep on going. Getting a little windy out here. Getting a little windy out here, guys. It's always windy out here. Windy or raining when I'm out here. It's supposed to storm later on today, so let's hope it's not gonna storm yet. I don't mind rain, but you're just gonna do this all the way across your bottom. Just make sure to overlap. And make sure your stickers are on the inside. If you have nothing to do on a day, this is a great video to watch. Nothing to do during the day. This is a great video to watch because I could keep you some company <laughs> if you're bored. Because <sighs> there was no way to have another one of these finished. They just take a long time. And I finished one, so I figured we'll do the other one together to show you. Be careful, because your cookie sheets are sharp. Okay, I'm just gonna keep overlapping. I'm pinching it under. Now you see, we are almost done with the bottom part. So do you see there's still a little gap there? We're gonna need to add another cookie sheet there. You need to add another cookie sheet over your gap there. I'm just gonna add another one right over it. And I'm gonna pinch it down. See what I just did there? Fold that one. See when you when you bend them to a like a when you bend them to an oval kind of looking shape, they work a lot easier. I'm gonna add that glue, and the last one is on. Okay, so you have part of your bottom now formed. So what we need to do now is we need to add some hot glue onto the edges, the overlapped edges, and we are gonna glue them down. So I'm just gonna add a bead of hot glue going down the edge and I'm gonna put my hand behind and I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue it. I'm gonna glue it. So I just put my hand behind and I glued it to the other one. We need to do this all the way around now. I think you guys might enjoy the sound of rain soon. You might enjoy the sound of rain. That's why I said, see why you need to still have access points for your hands. Don't go crazy with the wire on the inside. Just add your hot glue and keep shaping them to your tomato cage. See, we're just adding hot glue and I'm shaping them right to the tomato cage. You may have to pull them in a tiny bit. I don't go crazy. I kind of go where they fall, but I help them a little bit. You guys can see what I'm doing. I 
think we have one more right over here. That's why you need to overlap because they need to be able to catch onto the next one. So you need to overlap them a bit. Now, my other thing is if you feel or you're afraid someone's gonna get cut on these because of the rough edges, you could do the next step to the entire piece. I didn't feel it was necessary. I didn't feel it was necessary, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do now to do the second layer because the first layer is on. So the second layer, what you wanna do is I found if you bend the end, one of the ends of your rectangle, the shorter end, you just bend it up a little bit, you take your rolling pin and just rub it over it. So do you see I gave it a little crease? Now, nobody can get cut on this, but it gives it a finished edge on the next level. But if you're feeling that you're afraid people are gonna get cut, you can go and bend all your edges on every single sheet and make them all smooth. That's gonna be totally your call if you wanna do that. Gonna be totally up to you. I am just bending the bottom edge so that when I put it on my cookie sheet, it's a nice, it's a nice finished edge. Nice finished edge. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add hot, a bead of hot glue right onto your fold. And then you're going to overlap on your seams. So I'm gonna show you, I'll do one right now and I'll hold it up. So I'm overlapping on seams is what I'm doing. You don't wanna go right on straight, don't follow the other cookie sheet. Overlap and I'll hold it up and show you what I did. So do you see, I kind of overlapped on seams. Overlap on seams. Now we're gonna just keep going. I have all my cookie sheets folded up. You need all the bottoms folded. I already folded them all. They are already all rolling pinned. So we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna add a bead of hot glue on the bottom where the fold is. We're gonna overlap on the top one that we just have. And we're gonna line it up with the bottom and we're gonna glue it on. And I'll hold this one up and show you also. It's just like we did the bottom, but we're not folding it over. But we're not folding it over. So I just overlapped it onto the other one and we're gonna do this all the way across our tomato cage now. We're gonna go all the way across our tomato cage. And I believe it's gonna end up being about 25 to 26 sheets. I have 26 sheets here. So we're gonna see what we end with left. And you can stick your hand in and kind of press the bottom to grab your glue. When you get up to the top, it gets very tricky. Very tricky, but we're just gonna keep going here. Get my rolling pin out of the way, my jute out of the way. Make sure you add enough glue too. If you get some seepage out, you could just pick it off. I was looking for the Dollar Tree cookie sheets that had all that nice punched looking. It's got a punched tin pattern on it. I could not find cookie sheets anywhere, guys. I went to five Dollar Trees. I went to Family Dollar. They had two, but you're going to need a total of 20, 26, and two wasn't going to cut it. So I had to just go with what I could find. I feel like there's a fly in my hair. There is. There's something in my hair. Always. Always, and it's raining here. It's raining here. I hope you're gonna enjoy the sound of rain, guys, because it's raining here. Uh, it's a little tricky to get your hand in unless you put this on the floor. Unless I put this on the floor, then you could stick your hand in and pat your side down. But I kinda don't wanna be out of the camera for you guys, so I'm gonna come back up. But you could do it that way. So I still have a little bit of gapage here. I'm gonna add another cookie sheet over that tiny little gap I got here. So we gotta cover it all. We gotta cover it all. I'm gonna add another cookie sheet over the gap. And we're gonna see how many cookie sheets. I think the other one took 25. If I count it correctly, it took 25. So I'm gonna do the best I can with just trying to get this seam to go because I'm not going to push my hand in there and then we need to glue all the seams again we need to glue all the seams again where we overlapped so you're just going to add your hot glue right alongside and you're going to form it right with your tree Ooh, that gets hot sometimes your aluminum gets hot with your glue so just be careful we're going to go around and we're just going to form we're going to keep forming and like I said you may need to pull in a little bit 
I may need to pull in a little bit. I'm going to do the best I can. Get my hand in up top here. Long arms. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just gluing the edges around. But when you're gluing, pull them a little bit because you need to form to your cone. You need to form to the cone shape of your tomato cage. So I pull in just a little bit. It's not a ton. And then you glue your side down. And you're going to start getting dents and bangs. And But you can push them out with your hands. Just glue your side on first. It's aluminum, guys. It, it bends right back out. We're going to keep going around. And I'm kind of just going to form it to the shape of my tomato cage. Woo, picked me. Didn't cut me. Picked me. There was a little picky piece on there. I had my husband cut these, so <laughs> he must have left a little picky piece. I had to cut it off. He left a little picky piece on there for me. Left a couple of them on this one, actually. Sometimes when you cut, you get that little picky piece. Yeah, he left one on there for me. And you can wear gloves. I, I, I felt like I, this was going to be okay without gloves. I'm going to go with this and get a couple more seams here. And guys, it's tin. It's supposed to look all bumpy. and It's tin. We're working with tin. It's supposed to look all bumpy. It's not going to be perfectly flat. You're going to have lots of little dents and bumps. And the last side. Red and glue, and we're gluing it on. Again, I'm gonna put this one on the floor for a minute because I got a big piece in here that I need to buckle out. I didn't want to slice my arm on the top so okay so it's forming to our tomato cage is what we're doing we're just forming it to our tomato cage it has a little bit of an angle going on here we're going to go tighter now with our next row same way to apply the next row guys you add a bead of hot glue and you just keep applying we're going to keep applying until we get to the top of our tomato cage i'm going to add my glue and now I'm going over seam over seam. You don't want to go right on top of the other. Go a seam over on your cookie sheet. I'm going another seam over to create our tree. I'm going to keep going. I'm rounding out my sheets. So they're easier to work with. Overlap your next one too. Overlap your next one. And then we're going to do the same with this one. Just going on and overlapping. Adding them on there. Hold it over here so you can kind of see what I did so far. And it's not, it's not hard. It just takes it takes some time to do. And I think my mother just came. <laughs> She's gonna be waiting a while. She's gonna be waiting a while. Because I'm not gonna be done for a while. We're just overlapping and overlapping. And I still, I'm ending up with another gap. So I need to close that gap up with another piece of cookie sheet. do the same we have to glue the seams pull it in a little bit so it's starting to form your tree so I'm gonna add glue into the seam and I'm gonna pull it over I'm gonna glue it on I'll show you this one kind of went at an angle a little bit that's how you know you're coming in a little bit 
this one. You see, it started down here, but it's going up at an angle. So I'm pulling it in a little tighter to form the tree. We're gonna do this one. It gets hot. Your aluminum will get hot from your glue. I'm gonna pull it down just so I can stick my arm in. And get it padded up. Pull it back up for you guys can see here. I'm gonna need another glue stick. Lots of glue sticks. Down to the ground we go. Up and down. I found the most fun part, guys, was doing the punch tin. <laughs> the punch tin was what I found to be the funnest part. I kind of really enjoy doing the punch tin look on it. And we're going to work on that as soon as we get our tree formed. I will show you how I did the punch tin. Um, and then I will show you what colors I used, that I painted the tree. And I rusted it up a little bit using our rusting technique here at the Silver Farmhouse. So it, it's just, it comes out really good. I love the way it came out. And I did want two, so I'm excited. Okay, so now we are, we're at an angle. We're going at an angle. Do you see I'm kind of still with my bars? I'm still going up at an angle with my bars. And we have our tree form. You're going to have dips, gouges. You can pop them out with your hand. But I wouldn't even bother now because once you do the punch tin, you're going to have to do that anyways. So now we're gonna work our way up to the top a little bit. I am gonna use the same method. I know, you're here. <laughs> I'm gonna record a video. Uh, you're gonna have to give me a little while. Oh, okay, because I'm doing a video. It's a recorded video, it's not a live. Yeah, so it's, you're gonna have to give me a little bit. All right, it was my mother. She came over in the middle of recording a video. All right. So I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing now. We're going over the other seam. You wanna go over seams. And I'm just gonna start adding. I'm just gonna keep adding my metal, my aluminum sheets, right around like we did with the top. But it's getting a little tall now for me, so we're gonna work over here for a second. I shape them, add your glue. And then again, you're going to overlap. Always overlap so that your sides have somewhere to catch. Always overlap. I'm going to keep going around. I think this one's going to take four sheets. Is what I think this one's going to take. You're going to find out you'll be on a table. You'll be on the floor when you're doing this tree. You're all over the place. So there was no really good way uh, section for me to set this up. Because you, on the bottom, you want to work on top on a table. But when you get to the top, you got to work on the floor. So I'm just working around here with it. Oh, we got one more sheet to go. Okay, hang on. We got a big day. I got a big dent going on here. So I'm gonna lay this down for a minute. I'm going to take my wooden spoon, my wooden spoon. I'm gonna put my hand up in here and I'm going to bang my dent out. So that I can get this to catch. Because there is no, well, there might be a way I can stick my hand in there right now. Well, I can stick my hand in. There was enough room that I could stick my hand in. I didn't think there was, but there is. Okay, so we're still going up. Now I gotta glue all my edges. We gotta glue all our edges. I'm gonna add hot glue and I'm gonna start gluing my edges over. This is where your spoon will come in handy a little bit because you can put your spoon in there and press on your edge, your spoon handle. I'm 
just going to take my spoon. I'm going to put it up against my edge so that I can press my edge of my little guy. Here, Kyle is coming up. Guys, I was using all different kinds of gadgets. Wait, I was using all different kinds of gadgets so that I had something long enough. Um, something long enough because you're going to need it to bend out. When you punch tin, you're going to need to bend it out. When you get to the top, it's tough. I'm not going to say it's not. It's tough. Not all crafts could be easy, though. Not all crafts could be easy. You all know that. If you want something really cool, it's going to take a little bit of work. All right, so I got my top all glued up. We're going to add one more section and then a little top piece is what we're going to add. So I think I'm going to have enough. I'm going to have enough cookie sheets. All right, so... You're going to add one, one more section. I'm gluing it up here. This one I think took three, if I could recall correctly. I think it took three. Again, overlap. Just keep working with it. Keep popping it out. Keep using your spoon. Whatever you're going to use. The plunger handles that we have left for making the pumpkins. Whatever you want to use that's going to work. Help you work your small tight sections. One more than the top piece. And then I can show you how we punch tin, guys. Then I can show you how I punch tin. Please keep that down. You guys will laugh. I even have I'm a marsh you know these sendable marshmallow guys. This works good too. This works good too guys. Because this is good because it extends. You can get up far in if you have an extendable marshmallow roaster. Works great. All right, so now we're going to glue our top pieces on. Again, you want to pull in a little bit. So you go with your cone shape. Make it a cone. Go around. i got to bend this out a little bit. It's to go around. Not go around on me. There we go. Pull in. Make it round. You're going with your top cone of your tree here. See, you gotta pop it out. Okay, and now we have. Our, our cone going. This one's going to end up being a little taller than the other one, I think. This one's going to end up being a little taller. Oh, it might work. It might, it might be the same. It might end up a little bit taller than the other one, but it's okay. If we can pull this in a little bit. I think I need it to pull in a little bit more, but it's all good. It's all good. Tucking this one in a little bit more. Because you need it to be a cone at the top. I don't think I pulled tight enough. I'm adding a little glue here. Because you need to keep going in a cone shape. You need to just keep going up in a cone. A cone shape. So we need to add a top piece. We are up to here now. We're up to the top. We need to add a top piece. So I'm just going to take another piece of cookie sheet. And this one, I'm going to do the other. I'm going to do the other way. Instead of doing long ways like we were doing, we're going to wrap it short ways. And we need to form our top peak. 
So you need to form your top peak now, and it gets a little tricky. There we go. We got it. We got it. So do you see, I kind of made a cone. Kind of made a cone out of it. It gets a little tricky to work with, but you just need to get it to make a cone. It's kind of like making the cones that you make, um, that we hang, you know, the ones that you can hang and fill. It's kind of what it's, it's going to be like is just making a cone but I'm shaping the cone before I glue it on because I want to make sure it's going to be shaped okay now you can also pinch this closed if you want if it's going to bother you I'm putting a star on the top so it's not going to bother me that it's not pinched closed or anything because um, I am going to put a star on the front so I shaped my cone now I'm going to add glue to the inside and I'm going to set it on the top like so and then I'm gonna glue my other little flap I got here. Don't worry, we're dented a little. See, it's gonna dent on the top, but you can stick something up in there and pop most of it out. So I'm gonna glue my little flap on the top here, like so. But I'm not worried about that now because we need to punch tin. And, to, and you're just gonna pop it back out when you punch tin. So it's, there's no sense in trying to do it now. I'm gonna add a little glue under here to glue it down. Oh, that's hot glue. All right, guys, we have our tree formed. The tree, the tree is formed. Our tree is now formed. We have our tree formed. It gets a little cattywampus and everything, but guys, it's primitive. It's primitive. It's primitive. Now, we're going to punch tin, uh, which is, it's, it's, it's easy to do until you get up to the top here. Once you get up to the top, this is where it's going to get tricky because you need to either get something along to be able to bang your tin out. It's okay up to here with me. See, I can bang up until I get to the very, very, very top up here. But it's going to be really hard to get your bangs out of the top of your tin. The only thing I could tell you to do is to try to work with it with your hands. Not too much, but... Uh, you might be able to pull a little bit to get your bangs out, but your top is going to be somewhat formed and dented. But I'm going to tell you, when you have the paint on it, it is not, I love it. I don't know. I love it. I love it with the little dented, you don't really see it. The shiny silver, you do see it, but once you paint it, you don't see it anymore. But it's not, it's not horrible. I'm going to hold it up to show you. It's not like horrible dented. But once you have the punch tin in the lights in it, I'm telling you, you will be, you will not even know that it's going to be all cattywampus up there because we're not even, we didn't even punch yet. All right, to punch, what you're going to need is you're going to need some sort of punching tool. I'm going to tell you a skewer probably isn't going to work. You're going to need something metal. So I have a screwdriver that is like a punch. A screwdriver that is like a punch. I don't even know where I got this from, guys, but they do sell, because this is a screwdriver. It was one interchangeable one, but they do sell these that look like a punch. So you need to find something metal that's pointy and a little thicker. I didn't want something this thin as a, a toothpick. I wanted it a little bit thicker. You need a Sharpie marker. And what you're going to do, guys, is you're going to pick a point and you are going to freehand the star. Doesn't have to be perfect. Do you see how quick I did that? You take your punch. I'm putting my hand under as a little bit of support, but I'm not going crazy with my punch. I'm making sure my fingers are out of the way. And you're gonna follow the lines on your star and punch is what you're gonna do. You're just gonna follow the lines on your star, all the lines. It's hard when you get to the double, when we double seam lapped over. It gets a little tough to punch through. You could take your time, you don't hurry, and you just punch. When you get to just the regular where there's one cookie sheet, it's super easy. But I'm loving the way it even looks once you're done punching and you have all of that rough looking aluminum. It's not so pretty and flat. I think it looks better with the rough. Once you do all your punching, I think it makes your tree look a lot more rustic and better uh, than just that flat aluminum. 
you see I'm just going along the line of my star here. We're just going along the line of my star. That's what I'm doing. I'm just, they don't have to be perfectly separated. You just punch. And I felt this little punch tool worked great. Wrapping the tree is the most trickiest part. Uh, you need to take your time. You can't rush through it like I just did. All right, so look, I have my star punched. Oops. I have my star punched. Do you see it? I got my star punched. Don't worry about the black paint. You're painting over it. And then if you <laughs> if you wanted to leave it, see, I like it with the bangs. Do you see how it's all banged, like banged tin? I love that from the punching. Then I did a smaller star. I did a small one and then a big one. And then, so I'm going to do a little bit smaller star over here. And then next to it, I'll do another big star. And then I'll just go right around. Small, big, small, big. You could do whatever you want. You can even do hearts on here. It doesn't have to be stars. You could punch in hearts if you like hearts better than stars. Do a big heart and a little heart. But just follow your lines. Don't doesn't have to be perfect. Primitive stars are not perfect. And I, I do. I like the look it gets once you do all the punching because your tin gets that old punched look to it. And I am amazed with this tree. So then I would just go and I would do my big one. And then for the second row where the small one is, I did a big one above it. And then where the big one is, I did a small one above it. So that's what you're going to do. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you get up to the up to the top, if you start punching, we're going to punch one on the top right now. I'm going to see which way is going to be better here. Because my tree is so big. My tree is so big. Okay, here. We'll do one at the top, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'll do one. I'll do one here. And I'm going to take my punch. I'm going to try to hold this with my hand. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of squeezing it with my hand. And then you're going to punch. If you get to a part when you're double, like I am right now, if you are afraid of pushing your... It kind of pulls your foil back out. Do you see? It's moving my foil. Well, like that hole's big. But when you punch it, it will pull your foil back out a little bit but if you get to a spot that's really tough you could take your point and just start twisting it with the metal you have to be using something metal and then pull it out and it will work but you're going to have dents you're gonna have dents i'm gonna show you this is all live and learn work with it see i just pushed that i pushed that in a lot but i'm gonna kind of pop it out with my stick. Do you see what I just did? I just used my little twig stick here, my little screwdriver, and I popped my metal back out. I'm living and learning as I'm doing this with you because I didn't know I could have did that. But that this is where you're going to run in to the problem is you make a dent in your top piece. But guys, this will pull it. Just stick your whatever you're plucking in there and pull it back out. I didn't know that. I didn't do that on the last one. Just Stick it in a hole and pull it back out. Voila! We have our star. We have our star punched. I need to add a little bit of glue up here. I'm noticing that on the camera right now. Um, but we have our star punched. You're just going to keep going up and doing the same thing. I don't even know where I'm going to end with my stars on this one. Because I just keep adding stars everywhere. <sighs> I was going in a pattern from the bottom up. But now that I'm working from the top down. Same thing with the top. I'm kind of... I don't want to hold it and then punch. Making sure I was on the camera. I'll see. Can I take this and pull this out a little bit? I can. It does. It works. 
works, guys. You can just stick your little screwdriver thing in here and work it up and pop it back out. But I ain't too worried about that. I am going to add, I don't even know how I'm going to stick that to that now. Because it didn't stick well and I pushed it all in. Well, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. We'll add some glue and stick it in there. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. I need to add some more glue. But do you see? You can't stick your hand up in there now to pop this out. But it is what it is. Um, it, once I paint it and get all my little decorations on it, uh, I don't think you're really even going to notice. I don't want to do that. I'm going to rip it more. Yeah, that's just going to have to live the way it is. But because I was quick on the slide, guys. But do you see? I did. We just punched that little star there, too. Just keep working your way up with stars. I'm going to have stars everywhere now because I was working in a pattern from the bottom up. But just be careful when you stick your screwdriver in because I just did a rip trying to do that one. But this is how we live and learn. We live and learn. I put a little rip in the top of my star. Not that you're ever going to see it when the paint is on it and I pushed it back down. But I'm going to hold this up. So here's what I did. After I had it all punched, and now it's all crooked. You kind of want us here from flipping it around. After I had it all punched and everything, I spray painted it with a flat black paint. I used Rust-Oleum flat black is what I used. And then I did a rusting technique on it. I'm going to hold this tree up. I'm going to bring it up and let you guys see. I did a rusting technique on it too using the spray adhesive, just a spray adhesive, the cinnamon, and the sealer of your choice. I use the matte finish. Love this sealer. And if you don't know how to do my rusting technique, I do have it on a blog that you guys can see how to do the rusting technique. This is not a heavy rusting technique done on this. It is a very light one. But I'm going to bring it up and show you guys the finished product here that I have so you can get an up-close look at what I did. Guys, will you look? That's why I said the, the, the crinkleness on it I think, I don't want to pull my lights up because they are, this cord has lights right at the end. Usually they give you like a little piece that doesn't have lights. This one's got them right to the end. But do you see, I spray painted black. It's got some rusty spots. Then I took some homespun strips, just made bows, and I added a few of the rusty barn stars onto it. Guys, this comes out amazing. It really does. It comes out amazing. And I'm going to try to bring it down for you. And the lights catch on the inside up in your wires do you see those wires that we added will catch your lights on the inside so they don't fall out when you tip it over and then my top is a little bent here and there which I'm okay with I'm okay with the way it looks and I added a primitive home hang tag and then I got a wooden barn star guys a wooden star I got these at Hobby Lobby they were big wooden stars and guys I just glued fabric on it I glued fabric on it and then I glued it to the top of my tree. Uh, but I'm telling you guys, if you make these, you will absolutely love them. It will be a little tricky when you get to the top and it's going to be a little dented, but it's primitive, it's tin, it's supposed to look old. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Well, it wasn't too quick, but oh, my lights just turned off. Ah, oh, good. I don't know what's going on with my lights now. <laughs> you that one out. They just turned off on me. Oh, I unplugged them from the extension cord. I unplugged them from the extension cord. There they go. Uh, but I promise you, if you guys make this, you will love them. I just added a set of 100 twinkle lights in it is what I did. You just drop them down into the top of your light and then bring them up. And they will catch on those wires that we wrapped on the tops. They will catch and they will hold some lights up here so that you will like the top. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you know anybody who might like to make a primitive punch tin tree, feel free to spread the love of the Silver Farmhouse. Thank you so much for watching, guys.